booktube chelsea the reading outlaw here to do the first of my february wrap-ups this is for the first couple weeks in february i gotta tell you guys february has been a bit of an odd month i've had one or two like pretty good reads one really stellar read and then a whole handful of like not so good stuff so starting at the top my favorite book of the month and probably one of my favorite reads of the year so far is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. This is a um, fantasy book written about a group called the Gentleman Bastards. It's the first in the Gentleman Bastards series. They are a group of thieves and con artists, you know, young adult men who are, you know, all orphans raised together and they just have capers and adventures and things go wrong and things go right. And this book was just, it's so stunningly written um, in addition to being a lot of fun. And it's been a long time since I've read a book that was such a good balance of both pacing and character development and also had kind of this lyricism in the writing style to keep you so deeply engaged. It was one of those books that as I was turning the pages, I was just so... Like, every time I turned a page, I, there was kind of this voice in the back of my head that was like, I'm so glad that there's like two more books after this and then a fourth one being published hopefully soon the published date still isn't known but we're hoping it's sometime in 2016 like we being the like people who enjoy Scott Lynch's books but it's like nothing's known about it yet but I am so glad that I have the next two to read I'm trying to kind of restrain myself and not immediately jump into those because I have so many other things that I'm trying to get through this month um and then as you will have seen in my last video we have the booktube sff awards coming up soon but I definitely know that that's going to be one of those series that I'm just going to like knock out this year so uh after that the next most enjoyable book I had is Excellent Daughters, The Secret Lives of Young Women Who Are Transforming the Arab World by Catherine Zoep. Catherine Zoep is actually, um, well, at least was at the time, a New York Times reporter um, who kind of became fascinated with the Middle East after the uh, attacks of September 11th. So she became a stringer for several uh, of the Times affiliates um, in several Middle Eastern countries and kind of focused her reporting on women's movements. This book talks about everything from... Um, the gender separation uh, and segregation, different forms of women's rights that are championed for, including uh, the women's right to drive, um, women's only lingerie stores to increase females in the workforce. Um, there's a chapter on women who take jobs as flight attendants. And it's really interesting to see because Catherine Zope is a, like aware of her whiteness and the fact that she is not Middle Eastern but also expresses a deep respect and seems to have a good historical understanding of the community from which she's reporting. So it makes a really good um, representation from an outsider's perspective, but it's also clear that um, it's not the... Like, what am I trying to say? It's not the story of these women from the perspective of somebody who could be considered one of these women, if that makes sense. But it's very thoroughly researched. I pulled several, several books from the bibliography at the back. It's slim. And if you're looking for kind of a good book on feminism and Islam and gender in the Middle East, this would probably be a good one to check out. Like I said, I gave it, uh, Goodreads only let me give it three stars, but I gave it three and a half. It was a good, just kind of solid, nice, quick uh, nonfiction read. And then after that, we uh we start getting into some different territories. So I had to DNF. Well, okay. Before we get to the DNFs, I will say I started "Tell Me Again How a Crush Should Feel" by Sarah for reason. This is the uh, monthly read for the teen LGBTQ book club that I host at my library every month. So I have to finish it. I am not really enjoying it so far. I'm about fifty pages in. It the writing is not exactly. Um, the subtlety that I enjoy so much in some of my favorite LGBTQ uh, authors. It's, I just don't know how I feel about it yet. I'm sitting at like a two star, but I'm only 50 pages in and I have to finish it. So I'm hoping that this gets better. And then we get to the books that I had to DNF. Uh, I DNF'd The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. I, it's not that I did not like this book. This book is incredibly well written. It's just incredibly long. Um, I think my problems had to do mostly with the pacing and the fact that the characters for me didn't develop enough, not quickly enough, but in pace enough with the story to be 
as satisfying as I wanted it to be. And I really loved the concept of this book when I heard about it. And I've heard so many good things from so many people. So I fully acknowledge that this is one of those things where I am going against the grain of like common belief about this book. But I think my thing for this is just that I didn't feel anything to it one way or the other. I didn't love it. I don't hate it. I just would pick it up and be reading it and be like, okay, that's fun. But then when I put it down, I would feel like no necessarily like compunction to pick it back up again. I got about 300 pages into it and I just wasn't like nothing was changing. Nothing was really happening for me. So I just kind of had to put it down. Um, I'm thinking I may go back to it later. I'm thinking it may be just be a timing thing because there's been other stuff going on in February that's just kind of, I think, thrown me off just life in general. You know, you have one of those moments. So, um, but for now, I'm going to have to, I had to put that aside. I also had to DNF, uh, the tale of the dueling neurosurgeons. The human brain is revealed by true stories of trauma, madness, and recovery. Not because it's a bad book, but because I could not stand the narrator. And I think this is one of those books that would just work better in print. There are like rebus puzzles at the beginning of every chapter and lots of diagrams. It's a science book and it's a neuroscience book. So Part of me feels like I probably should have anticipated that, but my main problem with it was just that I did not care for the narrator. Uh, I was listening to it in my car, which means that I can't speed up the narration, so it's even more, like I'm even more sensitive to it than I usually am, because for me, for some reason, usually if I don't like a narration at normal speed, I can speed it up and that helps or fixes the problem. Um, but I can't do that in my car, so I had to put this one down and I just, I'm thinking, I'm hoping to pick up the print book of it, but I just did not like the audiobook. So instead, I picked up, and I'm really enjoying so far, The Family Romanoff, Murder, Rebellion, and the Fall of Imperial Russia by Candace Fleming. This uh, is a nonfiction young adult book that won several awards uh, in 2015, and I enjoy it because it is narrated by Kimberly Farr, but it's also kind of like a, ooh, Sorry, it just clouded up outside a little bit. But it's also a, like a semi full cast production. So like when they have excerpts from like um, Nicholas's diary or from historical documents from Alexander, there are like male Russian voice actors who are doing those parts. And I'm just really enjoying it. And like, to be honest with you, the extent of my Russian history knowledge is like the movie Anastasia and like Stalin. So I feel like maybe I should expand a bit beyond that. And since this one was so well lauded in the field in which I work, I thought it was uh, time to give it a go. I also had a coworker who read the print book and really, really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to getting to chat to her about it. Um, that kind of wraps up February. I'm hoping the month gets better. Now that I've DNF'd a couple of things and finished a couple other things, I have a couple pretty good size gaps uh, and openings in my reading. So I'm excited to just kind of pick up some things and hope that I come across something better. Uh, let me know down below how you're the, you know, you've been so far in February, what you're reading, what you're liking, what you're not liking. Let me know if you have thoughts about any of the things that I mentioned. Uh, and as always, you can like subscribe and I will see you guys around the internet. Bye.